This is Annabelle Gaberti and you are listening to Lawfully Creative, my podcast to talk with professionals in the creative industries, to hear their stories, what inspires their creation, what decisions change their careers, what relationships influence their work. Today's episode is brought to you by Crefervy, our London and Paris-based law firm focused on advising the creative industries. Subscribe to our podcast, Lawfully Creative, or catch up with our original shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, TuneIn, and Overcast. Please do leave a review and rating about our podcast to encourage others to discover our curated content. Thanks! On the 29th of uh, May, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Charlotte Seddon, who is the head designer at Globetrotter, the luxury luggage company, as well as with Momiji Matsura, who is the uh, PR manager of Globetrotter. I've been a, a long-standing customer of Globetrotter and have a few suitcases made by them that um, every two uh, two or three years I have to, to send back to for repairs. In uh, the uh, uh, new shop that they have in Albemarle Street in, in, in London, in Mayfair, I have become even more in awe at um, uh, the beautiful pieces of luggage and the craftsmanship uh, put into making those really, really superb suitcases and, and bags and, and little boxes and beauty cases. I actually have my eye on a, on a, on a really ravishing uh, beauty case, which would uh, be a perfect fit with my, um, my two other suitcases that I, I, I bought uh, from Globetrotter a few years ago. So, because I'm a customer and, um, and also because I'm so interested in that brand and in the, the, the Globetrotter products, I suggested to interview Charlotte as well as Momiji at the um, factory based in um, Brosburn. Well, thank you so much, Momiji and, um, and, and Charlotte. The discovery of your, of your uh, uh, factory... It was amazing. It's a bit like discovering uh, the uh, Charlie Wonka's chocolate factory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get cracking? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm, good. I saw, Charlotte, um, that you so you studied at London College of Fashion. Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, I, and, and that you selected the major, perhaps, of the expertise in cord wainers accessories. Would yes. You, would you please explain to us what you did when you were at um, London yeah. College of Fashion and why this specialty in cord wainers accessories? So cord wainers has been going for years um, and it's a really prestigious college that mm-hmm. specialises in leather work, so saddlery, footwear and accessories. Um, before I joined London College of Fashion, London College of Fashion bought the Cordwainer's name and carried on the course. Ah. So when I studied there, I um, my degree course was called Fashion Accessories, but it was run in very much the same way as Cordwainer's. So it's really heavily focused on craftsmanship, working with leather. The course was very hands-on. So although it was a design course and I had to design my product, I also had to make the product as well. While you were there? While I was there, yeah. So every single... Um, project that I worked on I'd basically design and then I'd make the product and it was always with leather so, and, and yeah. why did this passion how did that come about when, um, when you were a child you were inspired yeah, by leather things I mean I never planned to go into accessories I think my dad's a carpenter and joiner so I think I've always had that I've been around that kind of that skill and that craft um, and when I left school, I did want to go into fashion or dressmaking or do something creative. So I did a BTEC in fashion and clothing. What does it mean, BTEC? A BTEC, it's a course that you do before a degree. So oh. um, it's what you do after your A-levels, yeah. um, between your A-levels and your degree course. So it's a two-year BTEC in fashion and clothing. I also looked at photography and I did some dressmaking classes as well. So I did want to go more into clothing. But while I was at college, I actually found a very small part-time job working for a, a, a leather maker called Melissa Simpson. And yes, I, right, on your LinkedIn yes, profile. yes. So I worked with her on my days off when I was at college, and it was in a very small studio, just making leather products, so accessories such as bags and small wallets and belts. So while I was working with her, I was just introduced to that 
to, to leather work. Mm-hmm. And I, I just started to feel that deep down that was what I was kind of enjoying more. And I think working with leather, yeah, I just it just felt it just felt more me. So when I came to applying for a degree course, I saw um, at London College of Fashion that you could actually do a, a degree in accessories. So I thought, Cord Cordwainers, yeah. Course. And I knew, I knew of that because I knew the Cordwainers College was in Hackney, which is where my parents are from. So I kind of, I'd always known about Cordwainers and okay. leather work. And I think the fact that I had this strong link with Melissa Simpson meant that it would only help me in my degree because I could work with her and I was learning from her and it just felt right. So is she still around? She's still around. She's still, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still she, and she's still a good friend of mine as well. So, ah. so when you were at the London College of Fashion, you were not going to the V offices in the centre of London, and I think it's on Regent Street. Yes, Street. I was. Oh, you were as well as well, going to Hackney. Yes. Yeah, so the the. The offices in um, central London, that is like the main base, mm-hmm. which is on um, St John's Princess Street. Right. At yes. Oxford Circus. That's the main base. That's where the libraries are. That's where we'd go for lectures. Um, but day to day, I was in the Barbican. And it was a really beautiful little... Gosh, um, you were commuting quite a lot, huh? Well, I, I live in London. So, oh, okay, and right. at the time, I was living in London. So yeah. I was living in London then. I still live in London now. So, um, so yeah. So it was in the Barbican. It's in this gorgeous yeah, no, old no, 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 no. Um, primary school. So... It was a really lovely college, and downstairs was footwear, and upstairs was accessories. So interesting. I didn't know that the London College of Fashion had some um, some real estate and some some some, yeah. some 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 basically courses being done at the Barbican. That's interesting. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah. There, great. There's a lovely few, location. It is. There's so many beautiful retrospectives and, um, oh, and I loved and, it. And yeah. exhibitions there as well. Yeah. Uh, the latest being Jean Paul Basquiat. Great. Okay. And so. How did this opportunity at Globetrotter come about? I mean, were you recruited straight after your degree? Uh... Well, so when I was doing my degree, my final major project was all about travel. So I, I looked at Globetrotter um, and, you know, some various other brands. And so when I finished my degree course, like most graduates, I needed a job. So I basically, I, I approached Globetrotter and asked if there was any opportunities for a graduate. And yeah, so, so you created your own job. Yeah, you, like, I did. I, I you, quite, did you replace anyone? You were, no, no, I, I literally ah. picked up the phone and called through and spoke to the brand manager at the time, and he said, um, he said, fine, like send your work in to me, send your CV, and then he replied saying that you know, as it happens, we are actually talking about employing somebody as an in-house designer, and I feel that your work is, you know, is actually amazing. You know, quite. Yeah, what we want. So, to cut a long story short, I got the job, and it just so happened that it the job was actually based in Hoddesdon, which is my hometown, where my family, where I grew up. Right. So oh. it kind of all like all the stars were aligned for me. It felt, <laughs> and it was yeah, just that's how it happened. <laughs> Well so, done. Yeah. So looking. It was in March 2009. I mean, that was just after the recession. The UK was really, really yeah, in a I, bad... re- I remember. My friends were all, yeah. The market, for, the market was not great, even yeah. for luxury goods. Lots of yeah. people, with the Chinese as well, with the fight against co- corruption, they also started to really slow down and rein in in terms of buying some yeah. luxury products. So I remember. Um, I, I was working as a banking and corporate lawyer at the time in 2000, yeah. 2008 is where the beast turns, your funds started to collapse, everything. It was pretty dire. You did very, very well. And so it's yeah. been like your un, like your soul and only yeah. job for the last... Um, yeah, I feel uh, very much part of the family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's... Well, I, well I, I knew. Well I remember that recession. Yeah, and I did yeah. feel incredibly lucky. Because probably a lot of your of your mates from uh, from uh, London College of Fashion State, you know, they, they, they were perhaps not um, as, as successful as you were. Exactly. In... Yeah. yeah, I know one of my friends. She heard she she went to work for um, a major high street yes. brand actually, and her I think because of the recession, her job went sideways. Uh. And yeah, I I remember a lot of that. And some of my friends didn't from. On my course didn't get jobs and so at the time yeah. mommy she explained uh, 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 that um uh, the um the brand was bought around 20 years ago by um this um japanese gentleman i'm sorry i forgot his name yes it was uh, shiasu takubo um right. he he has a um he also owns a company called blbg which is british um luxury brand group so he set that up and also um, is the owner of Globe Trotter, where he was very much introducing British brands to a Japanese customer. Oh, okay. So okay. that's how it sort of evolved. <laughs> well, he seems to be a pretty flexible and open-minded guy because um, 
here is uh, uh, Charlotte, you know, freshly graduated yeah. from SCF, who uh, who basically applies and and he works out. He's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that no, is that, he's great? Is yeah. that is that customary in Japanese uh, companies that people are so open minded? You know, they're ready to actually create a position for someone who seems to be talented, or is it usually a bit more rigid? I from my experience, I, I sort of have the impression that it's probably not. It's, I think he is a bit of an anomaly ah. in that he's <laughs> he's very. Um, He's sort of a raw diamond, you know, ready to be cut in <laughs> Charlotte. But he's very creative yeah. himself, isn't he? Yeah. So really? He how, is. How? He's, he's, he used to actually be a journalist, so he he came, he came from that sort of um, background and oh. really enjoys writing as well as sort of um, uh, have, being involved in a lot of the marketing of the brand. Oh, so. I was to say, that's good for your blogging pages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good writer. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah. Fantastic. And so how did you evolve from being a junior designer, Charlotte, at um, at um, uh, Globetrotter, who basically created a <laughs> job position, which is job just company. amazing, in the middle of the worst recession since probably, mm. I think we can say, the uh, Second World War, or the, yeah, exactly. Mm. How did you evolve from being um, the, the junior uh, starting designer to basically the head of uh, creative, head of design at, at Globetrotter? What was the process in terms of understanding, you know, the ropes in the company yeah. and, and then bringing on your own idea of creativity and well I feel like myself and Globetrotter we've both grown together mm -hmm. in a way yeah. so when I joined um Globetrotter only produced suitcases mm -hmm. they didn't make leather bags and yeah so that was completely new so when I joined that was kind of my my job was to was to help to the, for the brand to launch leather goods so yeah I feel like we've kind of grown together and over the time we've we've you know I've helped the brand develop our own in-house leather goods line. So it's been a kind of natural progression, I suppose. But do, would you say that you also have some input on the uh, production of um, new models for the, uh, the the cases? Or would you say that you are only working on the bags, on the uh, uh, leather accessories? No, I'm involved in a lot of, okay. in everything really. Um, always kind of trying to help think of ways to improve the suitcases okay. and, and you know, obviously working on the leather goods as well. So, I mean, an example would be like the size of our, our best-selling 20-inch trolley case. Oh, yeah. I mean, over the years I've worked here, I've you know I've seen it go slightly down down mm -hmm. in size. So that's something that, of course. So the twenty inch uh, uh, trolley ah yeah, the one you can cabin. actually put. That's right. Yeah, I have one, one of these. Yeah, uh, very 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 handy. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. And really you don't handy. have to queue at the uh, when you arrive and uh, yeah. to get so. And so, what what happened with that? Sorry, they they evolved in size. Oh, yeah, well, because, because of new regulations, right? But, yeah, because the regulations were changing. Okay. The the size is always getting smaller, and that's uh -huh. our that's our biggest size to carry on. So okay. um, yeah, so we're always trying to adjust the design. Yeah, adjust the design and um, just make you know uh -huh. keeping on track of of these kind of market trends. Why well, um, would you explain that they are basically always trying to reduce the uh, uh, size which is allowed in in, in uh, on board and the ca in the cabin? Uh, is there a good question actually? <laughs> mm -hmm. well, I, I, is the size of planes shrinking or? Yeah, um, possibly meet more people want to. Just to have carry on rather than put anything in the hold. I think people are becoming um, more you know, possessive about having keeping their luggage with them. So, yeah. so very, very, there's more, there's more, it's more numerous. More so people taking yeah. stuff yeah. on, so they have to maybe restrict the amount. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, speaking personally, I actually I carry on much more now with my. But, you know, yeah. I don't really tend to. If I can help it, I will take a carry on case instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rather than checking my luggage in. So. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think people actually. I think people are want to carry on because it's quicker mm. yes. speed, the, yeah. the speed of getting through the airport as well so yeah. they just prefer just to have cabin luggage and then mm. get on and off and don't, don't want the hassle of well then you have anything. to fly in Lufthansa or BA because if you do with EasyJet they will say no only one piece of luggage <laughs> is, is allowed yeah. on, on the, the cabin so the rest goes to me <laughs> um, right so would you please kindly um, just perhaps describe um, a typical day for you, Charlotte, <laughs> as a, as the head of design at at um, uh, Globetrotter. What what would be a typical day in the office, or or, or not in the office? At, at, you know, at yeah. uh, 
um, at the, um, in, the, in, the, in the factory or at the shop for you? What, what would that entail? <laughs> well, I guess every day is, is different, really. Oh, like, there isn't really a typical day because we're always working on special projects and collaborations with other brands. Um, but, of course, I'm always working on our in-house leather goods line as well. So I guess I'm based here in, in the office and the factory. So, I don't know, a typical day, I guess it's liaising with the factory a lot, working with the sample makers, okay. obviously designing the product. So how um, would that work? Would they approach you and they would say, okay, so using that material, like, would they give you some constructive yeah, feedback? Yeah, on absolutely. How to... I mean, I would, so I'll obviously design the product and I use Illustrator, which is a um, computer-based design program. What, from Mac? Is from a Mac, from, yeah. From so Apple. I'll create a specification, for, you know, for example, for a bag, I'll do a specification and that gets handed over to the factory. Okay. And then the sample makers will, first of all, make a prototype and then I'll work with them on like correcting it and then we'll go into like a leather sample. But uh-huh. I'm very fortunate that we that I have the factory just outside, the well, outside like my door. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm-hmm. it's good to it's, it's, constructive feedback. Yeah, yeah, it's very good, unique. Yeah. Um, and I'm very lucky to have that because I've got constant communication with them. It's awesome. And it's, it's a really sure. nice system to have. And I saw you had a very swanky, uh, very large Mac on on mm. your on your on your desk when when when, when Momishi and I came to say hello. Yeah. <laughs> is that really important? because I also work on Mac? Yeah. And I noticed that, uh, and, and and our law firm specialises in advising the creative industry. So mm. I noticed that unlike when I was a banking and finance lawyer in the city of London, mm. you know, for ten years where we all had PCs. A lot of creatives do prefer Mac, and one of the reasons being because um, the design and also the quality of the screens is amazing. Yeah, I've, I've, only, yeah I've only ever used Mac. Yeah. I've never used a PC. Whenever yeah. I do, I'm like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> right. I don't, yeah, I've only ever used It does I make never a massive difference. Mac. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It's I have an iPhone. It's all kind of illustrator, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is from the Adobe Suite then. It is, yeah. So it just shows a little bit of Photoshop as well. I might Photoshop. use if I'm doing a mood board or something like that. But, oh, yeah, for but, marketing, yeah. yeah, but mm-hmm. basically everything pretty much is, is on Illustrator. So Okay, that's good so, to yeah. know. That's good to know. Great. So you've got this this constructive feedback coming from mm. uh, from your your guys in the factory. Yeah. Is it how does it work? I mean, is it like quite um, hierarchical in in terms of the um, uh, organization, or could it be like even a trainee who started a few months ago um, and has been working with you on the prototype who would come back and uh, give you the feedback, or would he actually go to a manager? How does how, how does it work? Uh, well, whenever we whenever I produce a specification, we have a meeting with our sample makers, and they're all trained leather goods makers, so they're very skilled at, at make at what they're doing here. They work here. Okay. Yeah, they okay. all work in here in house. Okay. Yeah, so there's maybe like four or five of them. So sample they maker. they can't they do work on production on the production line, but they're quite external from that when it comes to sample making. So we'll have a meeting, and we'll go through the spec, and we'll make sure that. Both of us are all clear on exactly what we're doing. Any questions on the design, they'll ask me, and I'll ask them if there's, you know, I might need their feedback on on some design from like a manufacturing point of view. Yeah. So we have a meeting and we make sure that we're all happy with it, and then they'll go off and they will they'll make the product. They're but with big teams. Yeah. So I brief. Yeah. So basically, yeah, we we have a briefing, and then yeah, and then of course, if there's any questions along the you know along the way of making the product. I'm always, I'm pretty much always in in the office there. So, and do you sometimes introduce some new materials, some new fabrics, or even yeah. some new colours? Oh yeah, absolutely. With the leather goods, especially. Mm-hmm. So this season, well, for autumn into eighteen, we're looking at some metallic leather. We even metallic leather. Metallic, How do you get yeah. that? Like through probably it's, it's been uh, 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 printed or it's been yeah, uh, it would have been a, like a printed printing. Um, process onto the leather okay. but we we have leather agents that we go to and we go, go to trade vision? shows yes yeah, so Premier Vision um, in Paris and and the Lillian Pelle the one in February I suppose is the most important of the year yes so it's... yeah so we go to yeah sometimes sometimes we alternate between the two it, it kind of depends on the other one is in Italy it's, or it's in Milan yeah it's called Linea Pelle okay. yeah. when is that that is a couple of times a year I don't think when the last one was actually. Mm, don't worry, that's fine. That would yeah. be much more to um, But I, well, I, I went to Premier Vision because I had, mm. um, you know, I wanted to check the scene, and um, I, I, it's in Port de Villepinte, which is in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in the outskirts of Paris. But um, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a massive trade show, probably one of the biggest in the world. And um, I, I had uh, a case and a matter on which I worked, which involved the Premier Vision, etc. So I also wanted to check the scene, and I saw that there were some massive booths. 
um, of uh, uh, um, editors, publishers who were were selling some trend forecasting yeah. reports. Yeah. Is that something that if you as a designer is essential yeah. to your work, or it's you not would, a... would you read those trend forecasting? It's not essential no. because we're not a fashion brand. We're you know we're a luxury travel goods brands so but for the colors for the yeah i mean yes yeah for colors definitely um we need to make sure that we are kind of aligned with with the trends Mm -hmm. but it's not essential that we have to follow them so i think when we when you go to trade shows like linear pele or premier vision when you go and look at the leathers um they will actually have like seasonal colors anyway so i think a lot of it is is based on taste and making sure that the colours are right for us and, and that we feel like our our market will mm. buy them, I suppose. So, mm. yeah. so it's not your personal taste. It's more like you were saying before that you also use mood boards to um, yeah. basically um, assess the trends and um, and what's going on in the market. Do you use Instagram as well to check the trends or yeah. social media? Yeah, is yeah. Thing? Instagram, um, everything really. I mean... Assessing the trends is kind of like every day as well. I mean, it, you know, in terms of like travel goods, it's, you know, I'll make, I'll always be watching people like if I go to the airports or like traveling day to day, how, what, you know, how people are carrying their bags and what kind of bags they're carrying. And I see. it's kind of something that you have to sort of, um, fantastic. So that's all the time. Yeah. Does this mean that you have, you, you can and you have to travel a lot as well? I understand also that the Asian customer base of your wonderfully uh, mm. perfectionistic and beautiful brand um, is also growing. So yeah. are you, how, how can you get um, attuned to the, um, the um, not the needs, but the wishes of, of the Asian um, customer base? Yeah. Do you go to Japan and uh, yeah. China from time to time? Yeah, or? I've visited Japan quite a few times. Could but um, but I think in terms of designing for them, you know, we are quite a small brand, so we can't really design just for one particular market, but, you know, we'll always kind of mm. be sensitive to their, to any needs. If there's any kind of colors that might be sensitive to them yeah. or, mm. or any kind of, um, I know, cultural times in the year, say like cherry blossom season, uh-huh. you know, we'll always, well, the rose gold, I mean, yeah. rose gold cases might be, a, they must be killing in Japan, exactly. you know, with yeah. young women. Mm. So I did, absolute killing. Yeah. Well, even with me, that would be a killing, but I already have some sort of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blue, so. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> think another life. <laughs> There's definitely some lines that. But we perhaps could... it's so subtle that product. I'm so sorry yeah, to interrupt. Yeah. I don't think that perhaps European women would react in the same way. They would might, might go for the like super bold, yeah. fuchsia uh, mm. pink, which for me is like uh, perhaps a bit too much. Well, you see, yeah. or like an American from Los Angeles, you would probably go for that. The rose, yeah. gold, gold rose would probably be more. Um, subtle and for yeah. the Asian taste, or that's exactly what I was going to say. Actually, unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> and is that right? Well, well like yeah. the, the, yeah, the deluxe range is it, much. It's much. It's a much bigger seller in in Japan than what it is oh. here. Mm. So I think our oh. like our flagship store here sells a lot more of like black, yeah, <laughs> navy, well, conservative colours. Yes, yeah, that I can, that I can, yeah. especially if you've got some male clients. Yes, yeah, so I'm yeah. going for fuchsia pink. Mm. Mm. Not a but you're right. I mean, there are some sort of um, very pop colours that. Um, right. We we had an orange case that was extremely popular over here, but mm. it wasn't quite so popular over in in Asia. Mm. But you know, it's a mm. sort of big, there's so much flexibility to the product that it's it's great because you can test it out with, yeah. with rose gold or yeah. mm. turquoise yeah. or silver or oh, wow. metallic but it's it's, it's, mm. it's always quite fun isn't it just yeah. to see the, the action yeah turquoise yeah. and, and rose gold oh. <laughs> 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 tbc you go. <laughs> <laughs> i said you've got also some I, yeah your, yeah your pr person <laughs> yeah of, you know i think this is well, this is, well, of course, because mommy, she's got the both culture and she's been living, she yeah. was telling me, until 12 years old in mm. Japan. So, of course, it makes oh. total sense to take some. <laughs> but like I said, put. we are a small company and we do, we all listen to each other as well. So, yeah. you know, I'll always make sure that I visit the flagship store and, we, and I get feedback from the store manager of what customers are asking for. And, mm. You know, we all kind of work together. So okay. it's, it, you know, we do. So on this note, actually, I um, um, I think that you, my understanding is that you've got the flagship store in Bond Street, which yeah. is um, where I love going and, you know, looking at the products. I'm also getting my suitcases repaired from time to time. I had them for 12 years. So oh, goodness, I'm wonderful. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still use them almost um, every, every time I travel. Um, and then I see that you, uh, I saw that on your website that you have some various stockists in around the world is that how the um 
the, the flagship store in London and then some stockists in, uh, in yeah. various uh, uh, parts of the world. Yeah, so our, our, our main flagship is on Albemarle Street in, on, in Mayfair. Yeah. Um, and then all, all Did I say Bond Street? I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> just, just in case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just, just Bond Street, but <laughs> yeah, just off Bond Street. Um, but um, the yeah, we also have um, stockists in Harrods is a is a very big stockist for us, um, and then also Selfridges. So who buys, for example, from Harrods? Middle East people mostly. Um, yes, I guess there are a lot of yeah um, customers yeah. Um, from the Middle East, um, okay. but. Um, yeah, I mean they're they're sort of a mixture of um, of clientele. I think that the customer, the the Harrods department store draws in. Okay. Um, but then also, yes, I, I guess we also are stocked in um, um, the US and Italy. Money is also in the US. Huh? Yeah, like the big uh, department stores. I yeah. heard that the um, so a lot of my clients in the fashion sector don't really like working with the likes of Barneys and Saks because. They all work on a consignment basis, mm -hmm. and they pay, uh, you know, within six months, and only if you actually replenish the stock that oh, they have. Right. So it just becomes a vicious circle mm -hmm. where if you don't replenish the stock, they mm -hmm. won't pay you, and um, you know, it's, and 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 you have to keep on doing business with them, where the terms are like they pay you at six months. Is that? As a stronger, much stronger brand than the, uh, the fashion brands that I meet at Hanoi, at uh, yeah. um, and um, you know the Man Trade Show in Paris, etc. Can you impose your terms on on big US department stores like that, or is it still pretty challenging from a working capital standpoint? You know, I mean, I think it, it, yeah. for, from our from our size and the business size that we are at, it's, it's again it will be very difficult for us to approach. I think some of the stock is in the US like in, in that way okay. I don't think that we, we have any sort of say in the way in which that they promote you know the, or, so that you would accept to actually put your your, your wares your, your suitcases and your bags on consignment and only get you know paid for the stock when, when a, 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 the end customer buys the, the, uh, the product or would you actually ask the uh, Barneys of this world to actually you know put a, a, a firm order where they have to pay when they get the stock in, you know, but, you know, like, anyway, don't, don't, don't worry, but it's, it's a big problem for, yeah. uh, for, for brands because it's great to be in a Barneys uh, for, mm. for, for prestige, but mm. you don't make, I mean, a lot of my customers in the fashion sector, they don't really make a lot of money out of that because yeah. they get paid only if it's been sold, the mm. product, and at six months, you know, within six months. So, mm -hmm. um, we have our, our, our wholesale manager who sort of deals with the with the stockists in, in the US. So, okay. so you don't have an external agent or distributor. You've got no. in house the wholesale manager. Yeah, very good. Everything is done in house. Yeah, right. but uh, but the one of the reasons why we we are quite keen to market to the US is is really because a lot of the sales are right. online are coming through from the US. So wow. in order to have some presence there and so that to direct some of the customers who are interested mm. in the brand and so what how does that work so they go into the uh, where are you you are at Barnes. you are i think we're also in bloomingdale's bloomingdale's um, okay there's yeah another stock is called betty hemmings as okay. well um, mostly new york and perhaps los angeles or? yeah i think one in one in venice beach in cool. california and then also i mean Mainly in New York, um, right? Yeah, well, I would. Uh, yeah, I'm so surprised. It's yeah. exactly the, the, type, the style for 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 New Yorkers, um, especially women. <laughs> like you know, yeah. the, the what was it? The sex in the city and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so what would a U.S. customer do? They would go to a Bloomingdale's or a Barney's, look at your 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 suitcases there, and then you're like, ah, oh, but I prefer to have this particular color, so I'm going to order it online. Would they go on you know, directly on your uh, online shop, or would they go to the net porte and? Uh, um, I think a lot of world. a lot of inquiries do come to the website, so oh, either good. they would find what they want on our website and make a purchase, okay. or they would get in touch with the store team at the. At the store, at the flagship in London, and then they would ask what they I've asked. If they have a certain color, or okay. sometimes that leads to a bespoke order. So that's another service that we offer in this flagship, where yeah. you can make, you can customize the, the color of your boards, or the leather straps, or the corners to building something completely new 
That's the, fantastic because even the yeah. customer, think, you know, is involved in the creative process. Yeah, yeah. And can be guided as well because, of course, you don't want to select colors which are going to be dreadful together. A so you can absolutely, also yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, yeah. But I, last year, my parents gave me as a present for Christmas. The creation of a perfume in grass, which is very close to oh, Nice, yeah. and which is like the the, the world, um, mm. uh, you know, <laughs> capital for creating perfumes. For example, Chanel created a, a Parfum de Miro Cinq number number five there, mm -hmm. yeah. and I was like, okay, well, you know, why not? So I took my one hundred twenty five cc, which is like a little motorbike, and I went there, you know, and, and <laughs> oh, expecting nothing okay. really. It was amazing to yeah. create your perfume. As a, oh. as, as a customer, you really feel empowered. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so, it's so creative, you know. Yeah. So I, I can I can understand. Well, I can't really afford to be fairly honest some custom-made custom Globetrotter uh, <laughs> suitcases at this point in my life. But I, I think that for a customer who, uh, who really wants to have control over the whole process and have something that is really to his or her taste, that's, that's customization. Yeah. yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Mm. I think it makes you also love the product more because you are involved in the creative process. And yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people who get their suitcases made with us, they're, they're, they're extremely proud of their luggage. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. Charlotte, yeah. would you mentor someone who is um, putting a custom order for like pre perhaps three or four pieces? Would you, in terms of a selection of colors and, uh, and uh, yeah. materials, would I you mean, give them some uh, constructive feedback as to whether it's going to look nice or not? Or would you even maybe, sp with Illustrator, make some, some, some sort of Yeah, I could definitely, you know, I'd definitely love to assist do. customers on that. But, but um, has it happened already? It hasn't. It does okay. always go through our flagship store um, right. and they deal with the retail staff. Okay. Um, you know, who will, who will have impeccable taste anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's, um, all the salespeople who would give yeah, some, yeah, okay, yeah. Kind of just feeding in yeah, for, yeah. for you, so some back, yeah. some feedback. That's yeah. very interesting, yeah. yeah. Wow, we have even, this is like a proper luxury experience. Yeah, and, mm, yeah it is. I'm sure you've seen, you've seen quite a few, um, you know, weird and wonderful yeah. creations actually. Yeah, so. well, we have our repair, sorry, our repair mm. service here, so we always see in cases coming like covered in stickers that are, ah. you know, I would God never knows do how it. many years old. I would and... never put some stickers on them. Yeah. Like, I love them too much. I would never do they it. They look great though, they yeah? really do. do they? And they look like they're told quite a few. I saw this, <laughs> co this collaboration you did with this lady who used to be a stewardess for uh, for uh, British Airways and you actually oh, went Hillary to the... Flavish, yeah. Right, you went to this museum somewhere. Yeah, I the BA, well, the BA Museum is right. where we... Where we um, yeah, found found spaces, yeah. 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 yeah, which was full of stickers, and then you yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, that was such an amazing story. Mm. Yeah, that's my favourite project actually to work really? on. Really? Yeah, because it was just so real and so true. I think lots of brands kind of create that kind of story, and for us, it kind of just landed yeah. on us. And it was and Hilary Farage, you know, we tracked Hilary Farage down and. Now she's How like a she, great. Um, okay. I think she's eighty-one now, actually. Gosh, um, so, so she was. Yeah, involved and she, in, in, yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, oh, she did. Yeah, and you know, she now she's quite a good friend of the brand, and yeah, she's, she's a like real coach of the brand, isn't yeah. she? Yeah, she's <laughs> our mascot. Ah, I saw it. You also <laughs> gave her some uh, some. Um, you gave her some uh, some suitcases as well. To oh yeah. Thank her, so. Oh god, yeah. And then yeah. the family said you can't. You, you can't you can't use those suitcases. They're too beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole purpose. You need to use I know. Them. That's yeah, how our customers say that. Well. <laughs> I know. What's the point of using uh, buying some suitcases that you're not using? I, I don't see. I don't, yeah. Seriously, you've lots got some of people customers. do say that, and friends say that as well. Especially like our Safari Ivory case. But I mean, I own a Safari Ivory, and it's completely. I don't know. I I, I love it. I love. The so way what would they do more. with it? They would just use it as storage. Uh, no, I think some customers do actually buy cake. Well, <laughs> well I, I, I also heard in Japan that people buy them as objets just to have in their, in their house. Mm. Yeah. 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 Really amazing. Really? Yeah. So they never use them for transport, they just as a... No. Just like an, almost an artwork As an aesthetic thing to have it as sort of in, as an interior item. Yeah. There was, there, was, there was There was one story where a, a lady came in and she she bought an entire stack that was on display and bought it there and then she said that she's going to put it back into her house and it's just going to stay there like a pyramid like a little pyramid <laughs> was that in japan in japan yes yeah wow yeah. Yeah. lady of means yeah <laughs> um coming back to on on uh, 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 actually the story with with the perfume mm -hmm. that i created um i don't really because i've never done that in my life uh when i last year like two years ago sorry when i was in class the lady actually um, almost jumped on me at the end of the session because she wanted to have a formula 
Really? Yes, she did. Wow. Yes, and she told me that sort of the thing that I created was really quite different from, um, and she couldn't quite place it between, you know, because, for example, she said the Americans like something extremely sweet um, and um, and poppy, mm -hmm. while the um, people from the Middle East, they like a lot of oud and mm -hmm. very strong and a lot wow. of flowery. Anyway, and so she actually jumped on the, on the formula. And why I'm drawing this comparison is I'd like to know, Charlotte, whether sometimes through this customization process, you've got customers who've got such absolutely exquisite taste and ideas mm -hmm. that you actually, um, yeah, for, you, you know, you use it as, 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 as also a creative um, source of, uh, of, of um, research for your own new products. Yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't yet in the, you know, right. that hasn't happened yet, but I think... Not that I have some exquisite taste in perfume, sorry, yeah. that was uh, <laughs> sounding a bit lovely. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, can you use but that we do, I mean, yeah. To, and yourself? to be honest, I've never actually seen a suitcase go through the factory that doesn't, you know, that, that's the opposite, that looks awful. They always, yeah. I think the colours that we offer as well, they all, nothing really goes badly together anyway. Uh, okay. I mean, we've got some suitcases right. in our... Yeah. Um, um, on display in store which sort of illustrate the bespoke look so each corner is a different colour each strap is a different colour it's completely multicoloured and it looks absolutely fantastic mm. like that yeah. on its own so it's mm. it's hard to actually like make anything look bad anyway with yeah, our product right. I know that sounds I mm. saw at the end of a line of a line of a production line when mommy sh showed me earlier today in your factory mm. that there are two or three chaps um, very, very concentrated on their work and looking at the products, the vanity mm. case, the little trolley case, and mm. just with a little sort of pin, just and even a brush, yeah. just like and ensuring that the, pr the product is totally perfect. And yeah. uh, I was, uh, I was really uh, very impressed by this attention to detail. Yeah, well, that's key, isn't it? So, to, I, the... I, I wouldn't have thought that there was such a. a Add attention to perfection to be fairly honest. I yeah. wouldn't have thought about that. Yeah, no, our quality control is yeah. extremely high, yeah. so yeah, it's, it is absolutely key. Yeah, mm. so you're right, so, nothing can come out of this line no, of being yeah. looking, looking shitty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. No, after no. what I've seen today, I agree, it's yeah. not going to happen. Well, it's a luxury product as well, isn't it? So it has to be, I mean, it's so important to us yeah. that it, it, every, every single suitcase, every single bag, or wallet, or Ah, passport quality, cover yeah, quality see, control is so high about the level of oh god design. absolutely yeah nothing kind of slips through the net and also so. the sort of simplicity of the design as yeah. well it, it's easy yes. to timeless yeah, yeah yeah but just to keep everything that is you know part of the design has mm. to be absolutely 100 yeah. percent perfect so yeah. definitely yeah. in the detail isn't it yeah absolutely <laughs> well when you have a japanese um you know, owner, and, and, and from what I've seen uh, from the Articrafts uh, made in Japan, I think that they definitely put a lot of emphasis on mm. perfection, mm, trying yeah. to reach perfection as much as possible. Yeah. Mm. But I think that's great, you know, this is this is something which is definitely uh, putting you, you, you and your brand um, above the, a lot of other players, because mm. It's not always because you pay a massive price that the product is going to um, last and um, and and um, and be of very high quality, and, mm. and then you feel a little bit dejected when mm. that happens. Yeah. Mm. Right, um, I, I am a, a, a an aficionado, as we say in French, of uh, Dover Street Market. So you, you'll often see me there mm -hmm. <laughs> in uh, in. in um, uh, Mayfair, and um, I noticed that uh, there was a collaboration with Comme des Garçons uh, mm. that you did, which for the little dots, well, yeah. if I remember well. Yeah. Uh, I also saw on your website that you've done some further collaborations with Wallpaper, Erdem, Erdem, uh, yes, and, and yes. Uh, sorry, Erdem, yeah. and Asprey as well. Yes. So, how does that come about? Do they approach you? Do you approach them? Yeah, in the past, from my understanding, if other brands have always approached us. Always. Um, wow. Well, yeah. I mean, can you talk about the, mostly have you approached want? us? I think but, so. Yeah. yeah. It's it's either been a sort of mutual um, yeah meeting where we're both interest the the both brands are interested in each other and then yeah. it sort of grows from there. But yeah, yeah. I guess I guess it's been a lot of the time people see the luggage and then 
have got an idea for it and then they, uh, they yeah, get in touch. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably, probably they bring their own aesthetics to a project. project. I suppose that the Odem yeah. yeah. uh, suitcases were very flowery and yeah, very they were. feminine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So he was a friend of the band, so that's how that kind of came about. And, um, what do you mean by that? Well, he was a friend, he was like actual personal friend of the old brand manager at the time. Who so was? Gary Bott. So yeah, I think that Gary right. And how long has Gary Bott been around? Uh, for, for, because I think when I bought my suitcases uh, um, um, yeah. back in two thousand eight, Pippa was looking after me whenever I had okay. to come yeah. and everything repaired or whatever. And I think this was this was her boss. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. Bobby, uh, well, brand director, sorry, not brand manager. But yeah, yeah, he was. So he okay. was with Globetrotter for about five years, I think. I see. Okay. And he left maybe. I don't know, maybe like three or four years ago now. Mm. So, so his collaboration with her, Dan. Yeah, it was, 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 was through Gary. So, yeah, but um, it was a great collaboration. And, yeah, I think um, our product, it could be quite like a blank canvas in some ways for, yeah. some, for some brands. So yeah. so for yeah, Erdem, sure. we used, sure. like, for one of the seasons, it was one of his seasonal colours, which we produced um, a bespoke colour from his seasonal colour palette for the external okay. part of the case. And so the was it a monocolour or was it with uh, motifs? Yeah. The inside was from one of his silk linings, which oh. had like butterflies or flowers. Oh. And, yeah, and then beautiful. the yeah, and the outside was just a block kind of color from his yeah from his seasonal color palette. So, so that's must have been that right. It was really beautiful. Do we did you... three seasons, I think, with him. So oh right, fantastic. Mm. And do you keep archives of his uh, various uh, pieces? Yeah. Okay. yeah, we do. Yeah. In storage or uh, like on online or through photos or do you? We keep it here. Um, oh, we have it here in our. In yeah, our factory archives, so the lock. yeah, and we have a display also in our flagship store of some various special projects and collaborations. Yeah, so. you know, it would be uh, it would be fantastic, perhaps, to approach if I may, it, it, because I was at the design museum um, last weekend. I, I went on Sunday to see the Alaya retrospective. Oh yes, um, yeah. which was okay. I think there was a bigger one at the mm. um, uh, Musée de la Mode uh, around a year and a half ago. Um, uh, mm -hmm. about Alaya but it was okay it would be fantastic perhaps to organise something with those yeah. guys at the design museum don't yeah. you think it would make sense especially if you've got like, massive <laughs> archives in, in you know in storage yeah, yeah. I it's think a great idea yeah <laughs> it's always nice to mm. hear about if, if think, people think that it might work and just find mm. out the idea and or perhaps and part of an works. exhibition about travel you know the art of travel or something yeah, like, yeah. With, uh, a focus point on uh, Globetrotter yeah, yeah absolutely there's uh, definitely scope <laughs> for um... I was wondering also, on 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 a on business standpoint about those collaborations, um, do you? Uh, how does that work? I mean, is it usually for a license with royalties that you would do this, or? Um, yeah, sometimes it is, and sometimes it's mutual collaboration where okay. both brands are involved in selling the products equally. So, I see. Um, for instance, yeah, I think we that we have very big collaborations with. Um, uh, yeah, Tiffany or 007. Um, that's that's a very big. Yeah. Um, What's it collaboration? Oh, sorry, James oh, Bond. Oh, James Bond. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so, we, so that would be for a, a license agreement with some royalties exactly. and, and also probably um, yeah, purchase of stock and everything. Yeah, fantastic. fantastic. And so, you, and and you would be able to store this on your website, like as a, I, 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 no, no. You told me the uh, Momiji that the Tiffany one is exclusive to the uh, Tiffany. Yes, yeah, so uh, that online uh, retail. Yeah, there are lots of channels it, it's, and also yeah, completely stores. Completely depends on the type of contract that we enter into with the other brand, but. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's most of the time a, um, either exclusive, so some brands just hold complete rights to selling the product um, from them, or or we would both collaborate in marketing a product yeah. together and selling them both. Both brands selling it together, so right. So you're showing a lot of flexibility as well in the yeah, yeah. It really is it's dependent on Fantastic. what the other person wants yeah. or, or what works for us and okay. finding a compromise. But yeah, most of the time it's very flexible and it, it totally depends on what what each of the brands are looking for at the time. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Amazing, and for you, I suppose it raises your profile and yeah. uh, perhaps also reaches the customer base of well, the Tiffany of its Absolutely, world. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's just interesting too, just to have another to be able. It's just interesting to be able to present mm. a new product that could be different, and yeah. um, there, there is a very big appetite for limited editions, right. especially in in Japan. So we have a lot of collectors. Not in, that. in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Globally, globally, but yeah, yeah we have we just have lots of people wanting. 
a you know if they know that it's a limited edition of 100 or 120 or, or 200 they would they want to have part of the piece of that jigsaw so, yeah. puzzle for their luggage collection and so. maybe we sell like a case yeah, yeah. Great. you mentioned as well that you you did a collaboration charlotte with uh, um um gucci i believe is that something you may be able to talk about we, when we went into your office we saw this gucci bag yeah so that will be launched for 2018 but, it's um, not it's not in the uh, the market yet no, no, not yet. Ah, because you told me that it was shown at the uh, February um, show, which yeah. probably is for winter. Or... Yeah. yeah, right. So it'll, it'll go on sale in August. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, but we 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 don't we we can't really talk about it too much. Oh, but it's um, but yeah, I, mean... I can convince myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, but um, the 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 yeah, the Gucci collaboration is really with them, and that we 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 just provided the design for for one of the bags. You did, yeah, just one. I think there are quite, there's quite a, there's uh, a few different designs. Yeah, wow. about a dozen or so, yeah. I think. So wow, that's much yeah. more than one bag. But it, but it's, it really does depend. It's completely up to them who what they decide to put into the very last selection mm. of the of the collection. Oh, it's like a pick and choose. Uh, I, yeah, I think say, yeah, I think so. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. And so they will do the pick and choose thing and then you would go yeah. in, uh, through the prototypes and then you will go into production. production. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Wow, Just that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would that be so. exclusively for if if something you can mention? Would that be exclusively for their shops or or just for their shops, mm, yeah. Okay. A yeah. bit like a Tiffany deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is going to give you such wide, you know, like su- such exposure to the yeah. Gucci. Mm. Because Gucci is one of the coolest brands. I mean Balenciaga is even performing better than, yeah. than, than than Gucci in the caring group. But after Balenciaga we've got Gucci and Yves Saint Laurent, so, yeah. sorry Saint Laurent, and so it and so it's so trendy, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You're it's going to be all over the world with your <laughs> edition of Gucci. It's fantastic. Yeah. You told me that inside there would be the word Glottrotta, the brand trademark yeah. would be inside, so yeah, and people yeah. will also be able to. Yeah, that's good. That's great yeah. marketing. Yeah, yeah, and business well. deal. <laughs> well done. We've got a very good um whole um brand partnerships director who is um. Yeah, he's very on the ball with yeah. that. You so. have a brand partnership, right? Yeah, like doing exclusive sort of things. Yeah, yeah. So wow. everything from stockist wholesale to um, brand collaborations, we 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 have a, a very good director there who awesome. supports us. So, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's it's paying off. For sure, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Just coming back on this point about the the rise rising um, power and also demands of the Asian uh, <laughs> market, especially under a, a Japanese management mm-hmm. of your brand, um, which is very much focusing on quality control, attention to detail, mm-hmm. more perhaps subtle colors, um, and also innovation for mm-hmm. new, new products. How would you say that the the strategy and the planning uh, from a design and marketing standpoint, uh, are evolving under this this Japanese management and and also uh, in in view of the, the the rising wishes of of your Chinese and um, and Japanese customers and also I can't, I can't remember how you call them but the people who come from you know Malaysia Philippines mm. perhaps not the Philippines but Malaysia South Korea um, et cetera et cetera how how, how are you uh, adjusting to the needs of this service. Uh, I mean, are they do they represent mm-hmm. a big portion, firstly, of your of your customer base, or or it's within it's, it's just um, perhaps the same thing than Europeans or Americans or people from Middle East. Is yeah. it the same portion percentage of? Uh, yeah. of, of, of I think sales? Oh, we're obviously aware that the, there's a huge customer base in Japan. Ah, very yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So for you, it's like your strongest, some of your strongest. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think that the brand has got a lot of visibility over there, um, which is which is which is fantastic. But I guess, I mean, I don't know about, not really about design, really, but in terms yeah. of marketing, we try to. It's it's more about the the British heritage and the craftsmanship that's the main messages that okay. mm-hmm. and the sort of sense of adventure that you want to you know communicate to the whole world as mm-hmm. well so yeah it becomes a pleasure to travel Ab- yeah. Mm-hmm. Like absolutely yeah, yeah. so my, I've got my eyes on the, the, the new model the vanity case oh yeah Gosh, <laughs> <one of> <laughs> yeah to put all your beauty products on your jewelry oh, it's cute. very very handy the vanity thing yeah i've got one so, so <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah of course i'm the designer of a brand yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, but mm. so so how did this come about was that for example that vanity case was that a demand uh, from your asian clients 
clientele or or just generally or that was actually designed before I joined the company actually <laughs> so yeah so it was kind before. of yeah so okay. when I joined you know there was quite a much smaller range of suitcases but that was one of them okay but since I've been here we have been you know updating it you know in mm. subtle ways yes. so making it, make, make it more feminine more um easier to use mm. and yeah but um but a lot of your designs sometimes come from inspiration from an old army catalog where uh, yes um yeah. it was one of the um very original sort of I guess it was like a sort of Argos yeah it was a traveling um uh catalogue which people could buy products from and Globetrotter was listed in, in one of them and so a lot of the wow. luggage that's sold on there is really for mm. um steam line steam yeah. liners oh and, going to the, U to the US yeah, yeah like really for 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 ship for ship travel I saw this exhibition at the Victoria and um, Albert Museum yeah, about yeah. you know the steam liners yeah. going from uh, yes. and, and certain members of my family also moved to the, uh, America from oh, Italy really? France, yeah. so, uh, so I was like oh gosh so that's yeah you know, they were in third class they were not in, mm. the, in first class <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was amazing to see that um, did you actually put some of your suitcases in that exhibition? No, we didn't. Um, a lot of the, I think a lot of the luggage that was talked about were different brands in that exhibition. Okay. But but we still see these designs that are travel cases. So they're mm. big wardrobe cases that you sort of almost open up. Yeah. Wow! And you hang your suit, or and there's little mm. compartments, so there's drawers to put your shoes in and suitcases. So you said yeah. suitcases. <laughs> back in uh, like uh, in the forties or fifties, the, the Globetrotter products were quite sort of commodity products they were not luxury products at the time were they yeah they were sort of uh, you know in the yeah. uh, you know from they were in the argos catalog well not the argos <laughs> catalog <laughs> <laughs> it's argos. but they were very the they were very co they were sort yeah. of common luggage pieces right. that everyone could everyone could use and Ooh. my grandmother for this has got a globe trotter that she was given okay as a routine i think but there you go and so you've completely positioned it mm really and not even premium this is no longer a premium brand this is like a proper luxury brand so you've really repositioned the brand in an, i'd say yeah. in the next uh, 15 years yeah mm -hmm. i think that's what our yeah. our ceo was just really keen to do i think that's great niche. yeah yeah this is where, I, I personally see that this is where there's the most um area of growth really yeah yeah, yeah. but just always keeping an eye on that on the on the patterns i guess of the of the traveler needs i guess yeah. isn't it so like what do you mean? Yeah. well as in like you know charlotte was talking about redesigning the 20 inch trolley case in order to comply with airline regulations right. and trying to figure out what you know people who do yeah. enjoy traveling on trains what sort of luggage they like do they prefer to keep them do they are they do they want to put it up up on mm. the hold on on the top of the train or yeah, yeah it's sort of the and every time you have to actually register some patterns did you say on that or perhaps some designs uh, you... sometimes sometimes make minor tweaks to existing designs in order to yeah. and so you register it as as as, as patent that's, that's is, is that what you said no not a pa not a patent just adjusting the design of the okay. of the of the core core collection in order yeah. to suit the the passenger, yeah. the passenger right. needs. The Japanese management has, has repositioned the, 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 the brand towards much more luxury and attention mm. to detail, etc. But in your day-to-day -day life, I, uh, as, a, as a creative designer, I, I understand perhaps that it's uh, you don't draw your inspiration only from what your Asian customers want. No, You're just not much more free-flowing. Free yeah. yeah. As Momji said, the Britishness and the craftsmanship is, okay. is super important to us. And... But also when I design it, you know, I kind of design with an international kind of mind okay. as well. So it, you know, as, as we say, in our, the USA is, you know, becoming more mm. popular for us. And, um, you know, know, and of course, of Asian market, but our own market as well. So, mm. yeah. so yeah, I have to kind of, yeah, be mindful of certain mm. regions, but, but, but design internationally. So... Very good. Yeah. How, how do you see uh, Charlotte and uh, Mamiji... Um, uh, Globetrotter evolving in the future uh, now that the luxury market is in full recovery mode um, all over the world really and, um, and that Asian clients in particular are back to uh, shopping en masse in particular mm. in Europe you know with a, 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 a duty free shopping so mm. um, is that where, where they don't have to pay um, uh, the, most of the VAT do you, what, do you, what do you plan mm. to do in the future or how do you see things evolving? I think like collaborations like such as Gucci and Tiffany that are launching this year, I think that's already yeah. gonna open up a widespread yeah. range of new customers and 
and that's kind of the way I've seen in my time I've seen the brand grow in that way yeah it's through our collaborations and and evolving in house as well I suppose mm, yeah don't you think that mm. some stores as well would be some additional flagship stores would be a good idea yeah I think it'd be really interesting to explore those sort of avenues that I think would be so, obviously so exciting for the brand um yeah and just sort of just experimenting and meeting new customers and seeing what the you know how grow, growing the customers in the US for example mm -hmm. more in Europe and maybe you know different areas of Asia will be a really exciting prospect I think for really? the brand, yeah. which which areas in particular I, I don't, I don't know I mean I, I think um, for instance I think Korea is a big market where yeah. where there a lot of people very fine South Koreans are very and yeah. also I think they're they're very trend they're very trend led so if you can really tap into a very mainstream trend you can really mm. um target market there but at the same time something uh, that's great about Globetrotters you should do is... something with K-pop stars <laughs> yeah honestly yeah I know <laughs> the, the no. rising you popularity goes, yeah. goes cr crazy but um <laughs> but I think one of the other things that people love about the brand is um sometimes that it's only people who know about the brand know about it there's a sort mm, of a hidden know. a hiddenness <laughs> about the brand which is also very appealing to some 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 people yeah i mean of, yeah of course you want to expand you want to get more famous etc but you don't want to over expand so that you no, know you yeah. end up in a target or being a copied in the target or, yeah, yeah fair, fair enough but i think it's still yeah. some room for that oh yeah That's yeah yeah, yeah for expansion absolutely in a safe yeah. manner for your brand yeah. without diluting it's it's yeah. it's, it's trademark no, reputation we're, yeah. We're no, still a lot yeah we're nowhere near sort of that no. that, that area there but. already you know um moving the uh, flagship store from burlington arcade to um Abermal, Abermal Street, yeah. Abermal Street was, I think, a great step up because uh, that shop is, you know, it's just like wow. Yeah. Really, it's a really wow, the wow effect. And this, this post me for so on the other side of the road, um, yeah. on the street, etc. So you are also very well surrounded. Yeah. Um, but I think, if I may, I mm. suggest as, as constructive feedback, if I was a customer about to buy, um, say, a set of three or four, mm. um, and I'm based in the US, I wouldn't buy it online. I would I would want to actually see it to see it and yeah. see the product yeah in the, in, the sh in the shop before I actually invest yeah. ten grand into uh, like potentially uh, in, into the, into buying a set and um, and yeah. so yeah absolutely and it, I think it's it's really nice feedback for us to know that you enjoy going to the flagship because I, I think yeah. the Even for you know a few repairs and stuff like yeah. that's how I discovered that vanity case yeah yeah <laughs> exactly but yeah you get to, but it should be an experience where people. You know, it's not the purpose is not really to, you know, um, not always to buy something there, obviously, ex, but yeah. but just to have an experience of what it's like to yeah. to know that there's a, a repair service, to know that there's a new product launching, to know that the the every, all the retail stuff there to help you, like yeah. no matter what what your concern is or what your request is. So yeah. Yeah. we also have the bespoke service there as well. So it's mm. just you know, it's more. It's it's nice to to hear that that yes. you know yeah. that that experience. Is it also possible, for example, for customers to order online for you for the, so in the UK um, for your website and then to have it shipped to um, you know uh, click and collect and then you 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 go and collect it at Barney's or at um, you know and see whether it's a good fit. And... I don't think we have that that feature yet. Mm -hmm. So and, and normally if they were to. Um, collect of the stockist it would be something that we redirect to the to the stockist so we would ask Harrods or Selfridges to or Barney's to yeah. um, correspond with the oh, I see. Customer. but if they buy it online it's so it's not an omni canal strategy no you would, you would, yeah you would, you would we ship would ship them to it the, yeah. straight to the okay yeah normally yes yeah okay <laughs> great well um oh yeah last <laughs> I, I guarantee it's the last one um I was wondering because you've got such a, a um a unique product, let's say, and it's a unique positioning in this in this uh, traveling industry. Uh, you, you, it's completely different from a Rowena, Rowena. Uh, you know this this German brand which has just been bought recently by um, LVMH. Um, mm -hmm. they, they like this sort of metallic. Mm -hmm. so, Mm. Oh, so uh, Rowena. Oh, oh, sorry. Remoa or Remoa? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's completely. You, you are. You are indeed. Um. um basically. Um. Leveraging. Leveraging the. Um. The heritage. The. Uh, the traditional. Uh, aspect, but with with a twist, etc. So you have a proper niche, but 
with success often comes also um, being copied and um, people trying to basically take take advantage of your of your mm. research and development mm. and your mm. creativity. So, do you have this issue of being uh, copied and have a lot of uh, uh, basically counterfeit uh, lots of cases being on the market? And if so. Uh, especially online, you know, with those mm. cheap stuff coming from China. I've got a lot of clients who've got this issue, so I was wondering whether this is also touching yourself. And if you have this issue, how do you deal with it? How do you enforce your rights, your design rights, your copyrights? Mm. I think in Japan there's there's a brand or two that, that try to copy our, our suitcases. Mm-hmm. But um, I think the way that they're made here with, you know, our original Victorian machinery, this, you know, they're kind of, everything's made by hand. I think it's very difficult to really copy our product. Okay. Mm. So we're very lucky in that way. Good. Um, and I know I'm biased, but <laughs> they're really <laughs> like it. The products, if you when you put it next to a, a counterfeit, it to me they're miles apart. And yes. A lot of that is from the craft, the craftsmanship of how it's made. Um, yeah, and the unique materials, you know, the vulcanized fiber board, and so. Mm. Well, okay. Yeah. So what you are saying is that such. Uh, a, a, an, ex, an expertise in making yeah. those vulcanized fireboard yeah. um, uh, suitcases that is extremely difficult to replicate. Yeah, All right. and the oh, way it's good. made here, good made in England, you know, it's so it's, it's more of a know-how that protects you. It's like such a technically uh, a, a, a complex know-how that it's not mm. you're not so much protected by you know design rights or copyright. It's no. just the complexity of actually yeah. making a product. It's the way that it's always been made. Yeah, you know, and it's mm-hmm. still is way it still is made the way it was, you know, from day one. And we haven't changed that. So right. I think it's very difficult for other brands to okay. to copy that. So Good. So counterfeiting is not, uh, and and uh, cheap copies of, of Globetrotter uh, suitcases is not really an issue for you guys? Not, it, you know, we know it exists, but it's not, I don't think it's an issue because no. it just doesn't it's not match the, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's very lucky. You are yeah. lucky. That's, mm, that's yeah. very rare. Lots of my clients actually suffering especially with your online platforms, the likes of uh, Amazon, uh, mm. Taobao, mm. and, uh, and Indy, um, ta- um, anyway, all the Chinese <laughs> platforms yeah. who really suffer with cheap copies coming from China of mm. their wares. Mm. Great. Yeah. Mm. Good for you. <laughs> well, um, I wish you every success and uh, please keep on being creative and making <laughs> some um, funky and, uh, and <laughs> super traditional <laughs> suitcases and oh. leather accessories, ladies. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really mean it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our podcast, Lawfully Creative, produced by Crefovi Studios. Subscribe to our podcast or catch up with our original shows on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, TuneIn and Overcast. Please do leave a review and rating about our podcast, Lawfully Creative, to encourage others to discover our curated content. Thank you.